Welcome to the Spring Championship of Online Poker 2014. The scoop is here. I hope you're as excited as I am to bring you the highlights of the best poker festival of the year. We're going to start at the very beginning. Event number one high, the 2100 No Limit Hold'em 6 Max. It had a million dollar guarantee, but we bust that wide open. 1.792 million in the prize pool, generated by 896 high quality players. And it's all about quality at this final table. Six Max and a really deep structure has brought some top, top players to the final for your enjoyment. Crazy Elor is the chip leader from the UK with 3.2 million. Probably some names you recognize if you follow the online poker scene. And we're going to jump straight into the action. Hand number 15 with blinds at 15,000, 30,000. Victor Chuch from Mexico, who has many five-figure caches to his name, is going to open on the button and immediately get shoved on by Grindation, Phil McAllister from the UK. A call from Victor Church, and it may be a high-quality final table, but we'll start in classic fashion with a race. Who doesn't love a race? And this one looks like it's going to go Victor's way. Grindation's fours and their tiny edge doesn't hold for very long. He needs to catch one on the river or Victor Church will be doubling through and they'll have about similar stacks. That's exactly how it goes. Victor Church winning a flip when he needs to. I'm very much enjoying saying the word Church. Uh, no idea if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what we're going with. 15,000, 30,000 are the blinds. So time to draw breath and take a little skim around the table. You can see we're deep stacked. If you've been enjoying the Sunday Millions with us, this is a little bit different. I do hope you get a chance to get involved in the scoop. Remember, there's three buying levels, low, medium and high. And that gives you a chance to get involved, whatever your bankroll. There are satellites running 24-7 for all those events, starting from a very low buy-in. Get involved. Amazing structures, amazing tournaments. I'm very passionate about them. It's my favourite online festival series of the year. OK, here we go with a pot between Par 72 and Grindation. Grindation, Phil McAllister has chopped the Sunday Million a couple of years ago. Very experienced tournament player. And Par 72 is Pascal Lefrancois. Not French, but Canadian. And uh, Pascal won the Super Tuesday on Stars back in the day. He also has a WSOP bracelet and finished 11th in the main event in 2010. So a couple of really good tournament players playing for your pleasure here. Grindation makes the continuation bet and past 72 will call him with the king high. One of those calls they'd never have made back in the day. I don't know when the day was, by the way. Fill in the blank, whenever you want it to be. But uh, a lot more standard these days. And both of them turn the flush draw, which makes for a little bit of fun. Pass 72 decides to lead out. And both of them hit the flush draw. My word. Well, this is tough for Grindation, isn't it? Pass 72 makes the shove. And Grindation has to make the call, doesn't he? Completely underrepresented hand. And past 72 finds an amazing spot at this final table. Grindation, who arrived with a healthy chip stack, has been, well, maybe not quite crippled, but not far away. Just over 10 big blinds left after those two coups against Victor and past 72. This is hand 25. Crazy Elor, your chip leader, with uh, just about 100 big blinds, which must be a fun spot to be in, being that deep and the chip leader at a scoop final table like this with over $300,000 up top. And let's have a four-way. Why not? Crazy Law got this madness started with the 4-3 offseat. Makes a pair. That's nice, isn't it? And uh, something for everyone except poor Victor, who still has seven high. King high, if you want to be precise. Pass 72 has the nut flush draw and bottom pair, so a monster flop for him. And smock rock flock. Smock rock flock. He'll catch on with the button and top pair. That's actually Elio Fox uh, playing out of Canada. And uh, another amazing tournament play. He's won both the Bellagio Cup main event and the World Series of Poker Europe main event, both of those in 2011. So decent chance you'll have heard of him if you follow the tournament scene. Crazy Law, not worried about the amount of players in the pot, makes the continuation bet. Smock Rock Flock will just call and par 72 is going to stamp his authority on this pot with as we said a huge flop bottom pair and the nut flush draw a favorite against smock rock flock's hand despite the fact that technically he's behind right now 
this is tough, isn't it, for Smock Rock? You never want to be just uh, folding top pair. And he does go ahead and make the call. Some dead money in the pot. And this is a big one. 2.5 million in the middle. Past 72 all in. Needs to improve. Smock Rock Flock doesn't need to improve. King's winning it for him. And they hold up. No club, no four, no ace. And past 72 is all done. Well, unlucky to flop such a monster hand. Really uh, tough, tough stuff for him. Huge, huge sweat, that one, wasn't it? A big percentage of the chips in play were in that pot. Smart Rock Flot takes the chip lead with it. And Pascal Lefrancois, uh, past 72, out in sixth spot, $53,760 for his final table appearance. On we go. We've jumped on a few hands and uh, the very short stack, Ricky. Ricky! Ricky, leave it. Ricky, no! That's a reference to EastEnders, a soap opera from the UK. I like to do comedy for 8% of my international audience. You can Google it. And also enjoy the sheer horror of me trying to do any accent of any kind. Ricky's got a little bit of horror right now. Got to sweat the all-in with the jacks. Got very short stacked here and no real option. And uh, he obviously can't see the other two players' cards yet, but he'll know that is not a fun flop for him with the king and queen over cards. Never comes out deuce, deuce, deuce when you're all in with the jacks, I find. <laughs> Crazy Allure is going to go ahead and bet into the dry side pot. Decent chance that he has the best hand and wants to protect it. And the smockster will go ahead and call with the flush draw. Now we've got betting on the side. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, if you want to play a high scoop event, you really want to make sure you play hearts a lot because hearts often turn into flushes. That's what I've learned about the scoop high events right here. Smock Rock Flock catches the heart flush. Going to be tough to get paid anything on it, though. Oh, not so much. Crazy Lord's going to bet again. And you'd imagine that Smock Rock will let him do that. Yeah, he does. He's just going to call. They've got half a million in the side pot. Ricky will be uh, screaming for another heart or a jack. Doesn't arrive. And he'll probably fear the worst with these two players betting. You know that feeling when you're all in. You just want them to check it down and have nothing. Ricky will know the writing is on the wall here. But these two still have a pot to be won. Well, Crazy Elor has bet and bet. And now decides to check it on the river. And you'd have thought that Smock Rock could go for some value here. We saw the 10-4 of hearts make a flush and get Grindation into terrible trouble. This is... Uh, the opposite. Just thinking about his bet sizing here, I think. And he's going to go for 350 on the nose. And crazy little, really with a bluff catching hand here. Tough to think that Smockrock's going to be betting something worse that isn't a bluff. And yeah, he does get out of the way. And Ricky will get the bad news that what he feared has come to pass. He's been beaten by Smock Rock Flock's flush. And Ricky from Sweden is going to be your fifth place finisher in event one of the scoop. $89,600. Big payouts as you'd expect at this final table. And we're going to be four-handed for the title. On we go, hand 44. The rarely seen 17 and a half, 35,000 blinds level. The commentator and viewer unfriendly, 17,500. How is your 35,000 times table? Well, the players need to know it. Crazy Lord knows he's got a ton of chips. Doesn't need to know the exact amount. Same with Smock Rock Flock. Victor Church decides to defend with the 7-5. He's rocking about 30 big blinds and has decided to flop the nuts, which is a neat trick. I've tried that trick on 35 big blinds, yet to do it successfully, but... The quest continues. Victor Church will check. Crazy Law will have a little think. Does have a gut shot himself 
and has the initiative as well. And we'll make that C-bet. Now, Victor Church has the fast or slow dilemma. Does he try and get money in right here, or does he play it more trappily? Well, it's option A, door number A, the check raise door. 189675, to be exact. Now, this is the sort of board where Crazy Law will think, well, it's sort of a nothing dry baby board. Can he really have anything? Let's find out and put him to the test a little bit. So he's going to call the check raise. And, well, not a great turn for Crazy Lure, is it? It's a fool's turn. Looks like a card that gives him the win. But as so often with the Black Mariah, not to be trusted. The Queen of Spades brings only trouble. Write that down as a top tip. Now, Victor Church is going to play possum here. After check raising the five, he's going, yeah, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I was just messing. I just thought I could win it. And you've got to feel a little bit sorry for Crazy Allure because it's the one of the worst cards in the deck in terms of getting him to put more money in when he's not actually winning. Got half a million in the middle, as you can see. Victor's stack is 740, a little bit bigger than pot. And the crazy one will go ahead and bet, which is not particularly crazy, is it? He's made top pair, seems very reasonable. For everything he's done so far seems very reasonable. I'm starting to think that it's a little bit duplicitous. When does the crazy kick in? We'll uh, we'll watch and find out. Victor, with the nuts and the redraw to the flush, does put the money in. Crazy or will call has a gut shot for a chop. Uh, it's not a great spot to be in, if I'm honest, in a two million chip pot, and the two of clubs doesn't help him get out of it. So Victor Church runs good when it matters. Manages to flop the nuts and get paid. It's a two-step process. The second bit is sometimes the hardest, but he's pulled it off. There's two million in the middle. It's going to slide over to him, and he's going to be in second place. So still four-way action in event one of the scoop. We are going to bring you the best of the Spring Championship of Online Poker right here on PokerStars.tv as ever. Remember, the players are playing for a share of $40 million guaranteed in this series. If uh, they bust guarantees like they have done in this event, it's going to be even more. I do hope you get the chance to get involved at one of the buy-in levels. The unique structure of the Spring Championship of Online Poker, the high, medium and low buy-ins. I do think it's genius. Got an interesting situation here with Crazy Law opening with sixes. And, uh, yeah, in goes the money. It didn't have time even to get it out. I think he is going to be tempted to go with this hand. Smart Rock Flop will call, and we'll have a race, a vital race for Crazy Allure, who came in as the chip leader. Now, ah, uh, may well be going out in fourth spot. The pairs are not holding up in these flips so far at this final table. Crazy Allure screaming for a six to catapult him back into this event, but it doesn't come. And Smart Rock Flop... We'll take down another sizable pot. A big chip lead now at 5.1 million. Crazy Allure, your fourth place finisher. Played a great tournament through a really tough field to get to the final table as your chip leader. But the uk base player, who won a scoop title last year, couldn't add to it this year, uh, but does add to his bank balance. $125,000 for him. And we will continue three-handed. And we'll continue with something of a cooler. Quite a big cooler, isn't it? Three-handed with aggressive players. Kings and ace queen button versus small blind. Smot Rock Flock's problem here is that he'll know grindation is more than capable of four betting and button versus small blind with, you know, a ton of different hands. Ace queen well ahead of that range. And unfortunately, he's really run into it. He's going to be pretty despondent when he sees the kings. However, he's not the all in player. Grindation is the all in player. These kings need to hold or we're going to be heads up. All good through the flop. Grindation solid with the kings. Maybe covering the screen on the river card. We've all done it. Nine of diamonds is not an ace. He is not greensteined. He's still with us. 4.682 million in his chip stack. And he's your chip leader. That's how quickly it can change. So we're playing pretty deep here. Three-handed. 20,000, 40,000 means that uh, the short stack has 50 big blinds. So we may well see some poker now between these three. Three great players, all with good tournament resumes. 
And uh, I can exclusively reveal to you, the people actually watching, that uh, there is no deal at this final table. It's a no deal situation. These crazy kids are going to play heads up for big, big pay jumps. They've got $179,000 locked up. Uh, but there's a big difference between third and first. 315k for first. So a lot of pressure on these decisions. Interesting pot right here with Smock Rock floating on this flop. Has something close to nothing on that ace jack jack flop. But has position. Foundation's going to continue to bet. And some of these hands are going to be fun to watch and probably pretty tough to analyse because. There's so much levelling going on between these players. Smock Rock looking to represent a big hand here. Grandation, the non-believer. It's going to get interesting if Smock Rock can fire the river. Well, Grandation makes a Mirage 2 pair. He still has aces and jacks with a 6. He's just got a spare 6 in case you need a 6. He's actually got, got a reserve one. Now, can Smock Rock flop fire again? He does. And if you raise the turn, you've really got to fire this river. Just trying to muscle his way through this pot. And Grindation is not going anywhere. So Smock Rock flop with the creative, aggressive play. But one that just ends up dumping some chips into Grindation's lap. And he'll be your chip leader. Over 5 million as we pick up hand 89. The blinds are up to 25,000, 50,000. And these two are going to do the dance again. Victor sitting on the button as he likes to do, thinking, be my guest, chaps. Why not go to war and one of you get knocked out? That'd be simply lovely. you just make me $50,000. That'd be cool. A set for Grindation. He's running good in these blind versus blind battles. And he will make what's become a pretty standard small continuation bet. Smock Rock does have... A little bit of value in this hand as well. He's got the case nine. Pretty uh, pretty hard to get all those nines out there, but they've achieved it. Oh, and that's a gross card for Smock Rock. Fool's turn visits us for the second time at this final table. She is a fickle mistress. Was the Black Mariah last time. It's kind of the Black Mariah's little sister. The club's one. Still not good. Still dangerous. Write that down. Also dangerous. Grandation firing away with this set. Smock Rock with two pair will... <laughs> absolutely justifiably think he's trapping grand grindation here and the thing about this is it looks like a bluffing card it looks like the kind of card if grindation was just firing away he might well fire again pretty connected board but i still think it's gonna be really hard for small to get away from this and grindation will check so maybe thinking if smoke rock has you know Given that he floated him in that hand before, he's been doing that again. Now he can bluff this river. Actually, the bizarre levels of this game, Smock Rock is value betting the river, and Grindation is going to call with what was always the best hand, right from pre-flop. Six million for him now. He really has held over Smock Rock Flock when it's mattered at the back end of this tournament. And Smock Rock, Elio Fox from Canada, is now your short stack. As you can see, down to about 13 big blinds. And Grindation will raise, and this could well be a shove with a king in the big blind against an opponent who's just opening a ton of small blinds. Decides to flat, though. So we'll see a flop. <laughs> Grindation, I'm just chuckling because it can be a really brutal game sometimes, can't it? I'm sure you've been in the spot where you've played an opponent in a series of hands and he just always has it. And Smock Rock will be thinking, well, you know, what are the chances of him having an ace here? <laughs> I tell you, they're 100%. 100%. Smock Rock will call really super small ball these guys are playing. Smock Rock still preserving that 10 big blind stack. And wow, he gets out of it. Well, what a card this could be. Just when you thought Grindation was going to pound away and knock him out in a series of pretty brutal hands from Smock Rock's point of view. He turns the escape to victory card. Lesser seen, escape to victory card. The king of clubs for two pair on the turn. And Grindation can redraw on him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have, just haven't seen the script for this final table. That's extraordinary. 
How brutal is that? Small Rock Flock now has a kind of a weird decision with his king. Grindation, with trips on the river, puts Small Rock to the test. So hard for him to get away from, but he, his hand is just kind of a bluff catcher now. Grandation either has it or he doesn't, but they're blind versus blind. Grandation is just fired away, and Small Rock does make the call, and you've got to have some sympathy for the Canadian player. What can he do? in a series of really tough hands against a really good, aggressive opponent who always had it. Elio Smokrock Flocks Fox is out in third. The Canadian takes home $179,000, and we are heads up for the first scoop title of 2014. Grindation from the UK. Phil McAllister taking a big chip lead into this one against Victor Church from Mexico. Let's see if Victor can make something of this. He would have been enjoying <laughs> enjoying the other two's many battles three-handed. Worked out rather nicely for him, didn't it? He gets to the heads up with a workable stack. So definitely in this with a good chance, especially if he can keep flopping like this. Second time in this final table he's flopped a straight. It's not as easy as he's making it look. And it will go check, check. Grindation having flopped something with a little bit of value. He doesn't want to get check raised off it in that spot. And Victor is going to continue to trap here with the nut straight. Grindation will go ahead and fire now, pretty justifiably thinking that he has the best hand. And how does Victor go about getting value? Kind of tough. If he check raises this card, it just looks really bluffy. So or weird, so maybe that's the play, or maybe he can teach, yeah, he does decide to check raise. And I think Grindation will think, well, wh what does that mean? It might be sort of a clever way to get value this, because it just looks like, well, he, why would he ever play a hand like that with value? It's such a bad card to do anything on. I don't know, what do you do in Grindation spot? Just pretend with me for a second that you don't know the other guy has the nut straight. It's tough to give it up. We are playing heads up after all. And Grindation does make the call. King of Hearts doesn't change too much. Pretty tough for Victor to have a king. Not very many kings in his range, are there? Unless he happened to be making a move with one. And he does now shove. And I think this is actually a little bit tricky for Grindation because what is Victor supposed to have here? And he doesn't hesitate for long and makes the call. And you can see his dilemma. Victor's like line made almost no sense. It was kind of complete monsters or complete bluffs. And unfortunately for Grindation, it was the first one of those two unspeakable options. So Grindation runs into a monster and Victor has shown himself adept at two pretty important skills. One, flopping the nuts. Two, getting some guy to put money in when you've got the nuts. Write that down. <laughs> He's got a series of tips out of this final table. I'm not sure how useful they really are. Victor Church again has outflopped Grindation here. And just in case anyone hadn't noticed, we're in a real battle now. Even chip stacks for this title. Like I told you, there's no deal at this final table. These guys are playing heads up for a ton of money, nearly $80,000. Just imagine that. Would you be able to make pressure decisions for $80,000? You've got to forget about that and focus on the game. These two like, look like they're going to have no problem with it. Well, Victor's uh, changing it up here. Again, he flops a big hand. This time he's going to go ahead and check raise the flop. And this is what's really tough about playing heads up against someone you haven't played before if they're going to mix it up. Really hard for Grindation to get a read. He does have top pair, by the way, which is obviously a big hand heads up. Well, that might be a little bit of an action killer. The board's now really connected. 10 making a straight. Victor Church may not be completely comfortable with his hand being best here. There's a million in the middle. Victor's going to go ahead and check. I think Grindation will follow suit. He does check. So yeah, the eight, an action killer on the turn. And the king of spades. It's an action re-killer. Just in case the action was getting up, you know where the action's been knocked out and it's just struggling for its gun or something. It's been re-knocked out. There is no action here. <laughs> Victor Church forced to check down his two pair. And 
you'd imagine Grindation will just check this down. He may think about turning it into a bluff just in case Victor Church has a real hand exactly the kind he does. But it's a pretty creative and probably unnecessary play sitting there with a queen. I mean, Victor could have been check-raising uh, the flop with all kinds of stuff. And he will take it down. So we're pretty even here. 4.1 plays 4.6. We're playing 40, 80. So there's a lot of poker left to play. Over 50 big blinds in each stack. Victor will raise the button and Grindation will call. And Victor's going to win this pot the majority of the time. Do you know how I know? The power of math. So in your face, gut feelings. Grindation will check. Not a bad flop for the ace high heads up. There aren't that many bad flops for the ace high heads up. It's very often winning after the flop. Not on this occasion. Victor will go ahead and bet and Grindation will call. We've got just over half a million in the middle. And ping. That is the sound of Grindation hitting his ace on the turn. Not necessarily easy for Victor to know he's beat here. Obviously, Grindation is going to three bet a lot of his aces pre flop. So, not a ton of ace highs in his range. I don't think Victor's going to be betting here, though. Getting check raised would be really gross for him. He is going to go ahead and bet. A little bit surprising in pot control there because. He kind of makes a lot of Grindation's weak hands fold here. Unless he feels he's got him at the point where he's just not going to believe anything he ever does. Grindation makes the easy call with the aces. And what do you know? We've seen some fun board runouts on this final table. This is how the scoop's going to go. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Victor hits well. It's the virtual nuts, isn't it? Playing heads up. The way the action's gone. A set of nines on the river. He's just going to have to work out how much he can get paid here. And I don't think Grindation can really fold. He knows his opponent's capable of bluffing and just firing away. It is a sort of sturdy looking bet. I guess it looks like a value bet, but Grindation's hand's so underrepresented. Yeah, and he doesn't think long before calling. And Victor Church takes a significant pot, gives him back the chip lead. It's a 2 million chip lead, up to 5.5 million now. Hand 157 in what's turned into a reasonably long final table. It would be long by Sunday million standards, so this is the scoop. And the structures are so much different, so much more poker to be played at these finals. That's why they're so much fun to watch. And we're going to watch another single raised pot here. Victor's raised the button. Grindation defends. And checks. If you look under the dictionary where it says dry flop, it's actually just a picture of this flop. Exactly this flop, 952, no suits. No one can ever have anything, surely. Victor will go ahead and bet. And Grindation probably isn't just going to give up here. He does decide to call. So we'll have uh, 600,000 in the middle. And an 8 for the UK player Grindation. I haven't given his screen name enough credit, by the way. It's kind of a cool screen name. The verb to grind. I grindated it. I was full of grindation on Sunday. Definitely works. Definitely. Right click, add to dictionary. You're welcome. And why don't we have another redraw? Has there been a board run out without a redraw at this final table? <laughs> Well, Grindation will be really having to grind mentally now. It's so, so tough playing heads up when you keep running into hands or, as is happening, he keeps getting either redrawn or he has a bit of something. There's only so much you can do. And uh, tough to keep his, uh, his mental cool here, I think. He was the big chip leader at the start of this heads up match as well. So really a tough examination for him. And Victor hasn't flopped a straight for 30 hands or something. Well overdue. <laughs> it's an impressive talent. He should take that on the road. What do you do? I flop straight. Doesn't matter what you give me to start with. Watch this. He has flopped the nut straight again. This time, Grindation doesn't have a little something. The last couple of times, Victor's flopped 
the nuts. His opponents had something. I mean, Grindation might have something that he might have had enough of just losing pots to Victor. That might cause him to continue. And yeah, he does decide to make a play. Ugh, it's just horrible for Grindation, isn't it? One of those horrible heads up matches where he just keeps running into an opponent with better cards. And you can't criticise him trying to make a move on this flop. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just a bad turn card as well. He's going to be so tempted to bluff it. There's a million in the middle. Victor Church sitting with the nuts, doing a lap of honour round his bedroom slash living room, doing that hands clasped together over the right then left shoulder gesture. Shang, please, please put your money in. Grindation obliges. I don't think he's done a single thing wrong in this hand. He's check raised a board he could easily have. He's bluffing the ace on the turn, classic. He just happens to be bluffing into the nuts and if he doesn't slow down this tournament's going to be over 2.2 million in the middle how desperately does grindation want to win this pot how much frustration has built up over the pots he's lost if he decides to pull the trigger on this river this tournament could be over the two of spades might save him it's such a blank card but once again, he'll be sitting there thinking, what can his opponent has? He decides to pull the trigger and this one is over. Victor Church gets to make the Johnny Chan move. I call you with the nut straight and I win the title. What a heads up match for Victor Church and what an ability to flop straights when it counts. You've still got to play them right though. He got value every time and talk about value. $315,929 into his back pocket for a $2,100 buy-in. What a fantastic first final table of the scoop that was. Victor Church is your champion of event one. Grindation played an amazing final table and tournament, but just came up short. And Elio Smokrock Flop Fox rounds out the podium. Sensational tournament. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. That's just the beginning. The very best of the best online series of the year. The Scoop will be right here for you on PokerStars.tv. For everyone here, I'm Nick Welford. You take big care.